Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. Thank you. This episode is going to be, I think, a little bit of an interesting one. And, um, well, I hope it's an interesting one. I am so extremely pleased and happy with how the last episode was um, was received. So many comments. I have enjoy reading each and every one of them. And with more comments, also that means more hateful comments also. And I've enjoyed reading each and every one of them. And I'm not joking about this. I really have. Because it, it allows me to have an understanding that when faced with the truth, people are still incapable of letting go of their preconceived notion or the idea or how they have classify, quantify a person or persons for a long time. This is not nothing new. This is this is what's happening in the Middle East. It's what's happening in Israel and Palestine. It's what's happening in America. It's what's happening in France. It's what's happening in Germany. It's happening across our you know what they call civilized society. Because when we have governments who are unwilling to accept what their eyes are seeing and to stay with the narrative of dehumanization of other people, it starts to not make sense to me because it doesn't but it allows me to have an understanding a little bit more of an understanding of the human condition and the shame the shame that we need to reckon with because what I think happens is when we hold on to a false narrative when we've defended it for so long that the truth is so shameful for us to admit that we are part of that nastiness that the only thing, resource that we have is to squash the, the truth and, 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 and dig the deepest hole we can find in our soul and bury it and maintain the false narrative that has brought us to this point. So as I said, this episode is going to be a little bit different. I would like to start with a prayer. And last Sunday, uh, the um, Sunday... Um, Sussex Sundays with uh, Lady Sussex, George and Charles Um, I think if I'm not mistaken our wonderful beautiful church Nelly was either going in to get some stuff taken care of in regards to her health um, this week or the following week but I I want to you know dedicate this prayer also to church Nelly and, and, and for all of us and thank you for allowing me to do this because I I, I'm feeling it extremely deeply that there's a need and and whatever words I'm able to bring forth with the guidance of that which is more powerful than than me um, let it be Loving Creator, we come to you today seeking your guidance in this fragile journey of life. We ask for your light to lead us through the darkness, 
for your wisdom to guide our hearts and minds as we navigate uncertainty and pain. Show us the way, O oh Lord, when we feel lost, when our burdens seem too heavy to bear. Help us to trust in your divine plan, even when the path ahead is unclear. We lift We lift up those who are physically ill, those whose bodies are weary and in need of healing. May your grace surround them like a comfort and embrace, bringing strength where there is weakness, relief where there is pain, and hope where there is despair. We pray for their recovery and that they may feel your healing touch upon them, restoring their health. For those whose minds are troubled, weighted down by anxiety and fear or sorrow, we ask for your peace. Quiet the storms within them, smooth their restless thoughts and grant them clarity in the midst of confusion. Heal their hearts, Lord, and fill them with the assurance that you are with them now and always. We pray for peace in our world where division and hatred have blended And sometimes it just seems that there's no end to all of this violence. Humanity seems blind to all of it. We're blind to our own humanity and that of the other. Help us to see each other as you see us as children of one creator, bound together by love and compassion. Lord, tear down these walls of ignorance and fear and prejudice that keep us apart. Let no religion, let no culture, tradition, or long-held grievances or beliefs hold any power over us, over our hearts, over our minds, and preventing us from seeing the beauty and the dignity that our human souls hold. May your light dissolve the darkness that covers our eyes that we may see one another clearly as brothers and sisters. Teach us to forgive as you forgive us, to love as you love us, to live in harmony. Guide us towards a world where healing flows where peace reigns, where love conquers. We place our hope, our trust in you today, yesterday, tomorrow. In you, all things are possible. Amen.
you're doing well. And、uh, what an emotional kind of emotional time.、Uh, I'm not sure why, but it certainly has been for me. I. I just, I just feel, I, I, I can feel it. There is, there is something. And、um, I, 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 I hope by taking the time to actually、um, recognize it、um, and offer a prayer that we can find comfort, we can find hope, we can find love and care and all of that. So. Once again, welcome to today's episode. And、uh, I was thinking that what we'll do is go through some of the comments from yesterday and、um, see what else we, we can do. And in the meanwhile, you know,、um, educate each other, fuel、um, each other with love and joy and happiness. And, and look, you don't, if you don't feel it, you don't feel it, right? So let's go straight into the first comment. And our first comment is from the always wonderful and beautiful Connie Palmer.、Um, hi, Connie. And it reads Thank you, Antonio, for a fantastic podcast. I enjoy it very much. We must never stop calling these people out. We have receipts. Megan's legacy is a great one. May the Lord Almighty God continue to bless and protect Megan, Harry, Archie, Lilibeth. And Doria, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me hear the house say amen. Amen. Can I get another amen? Amen. That's right.、Um, absolutely. Absolutely.、Um, Connie, we, in, in whatever way we can, right? I come back again. I know sometimes I repeat things like a million times. I sound like my, <laughs> my grandmother. May her soul rest in peace.、Um, I, I, I remember I was, I was really conflicted about something. And I was trying to find, because I'm always, when I'm going to offer my help or contribute or whatever it is, I'm always trying to see how best can I, can they utilize whatever skills that I've got in order to, you know, help better. And I was getting frustrated about something because I, I attended.、Um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a march, it was a, 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 a protest. I attended one. And I kept thinking, this is not the best use of my time. Like, I, sh- I, I, I don't know, I should be doing something else, but I don't know what that is. And that, it, it, it was that evening or that same week, Baron. Was talking about not all of us are called to do the same thing. We can all be working towards the same cause, but not all of us are called to protest. Some people are built to protest.、Um, not all of us are called to do the, that same thing. We have to cater to what our talent is. And he said, some people are called to be writers. Right? If, if, if there's a newsletter, if there is、um, things that you need to、um, hold up on a billboard or something, he goes, there are people who are called to be the social media、um, people tweeting and, and, and putting out、um, Instagram posts and all of that. And it was like the message I needed to hear because he said it so clearly and it made so much sense that. I, I then was able to say, okay, I can do this, 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 and this. And that is where my talents are best invested, right?、Um, we have to, whether it's myself、um, calling it out on the podcast, whether it's speaking to a family member, whether it's a friend, whether it's a colleague. As long as you're not putting yourself into danger, putting yourself into one of these like never ending arguments because you're basically speaking to a rock. But we have to call it out because it's insidious, right? And、um, I'll show in a few minutes 
some of the insidiousness that is <laughs> goes on every day, every single day. I'm with you, Connie. Thank you. All right, here we go. Um, Anita Edwards said, thank you for sharing. Pleasure, Anita. Um, Deborah said, um, thank you, Antonio. Thank you um, so much. You're very welcome. Always, always, always. Um, it's my pleasure. And then we have Hilda. Hilda said, hola, Antonio. Hola, como estas, Hilda? Espero que todo esté bien. Then we have Dr. Dres said spot on, spot on. In other words, I aim, I shoot, it went spot on. Thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm ridiculous, I really am. Uh, Sharifa or Sharifia uh, 2023 said, great analysis, Antonio, thank you. Mon plaisir, it is always my pleasure. Um, Lydia Washington. Dun, 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 dun. Lydia said, thank you, Antonio. And I said, it's my honor, Lydia. And <laughs> Lydia's like, what's wrong with this guy? Um, uh, Vinny? Yeah, v Vinny. This is great. Uh, for the algorithm. Cheers. I haven't seen one of those in a while. I'm so happy to... to um, to, to see you in the comment section and for the algorithm. I love it. Thank you so very much. Uh, did I miss anyone? Did, oh, 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 I did. Triple X, I Z for you, Q. The queen's health was never announced. Aha. Uh -huh. I love it when you folks are on it. You know what I mean? No, it, it was never, never, yeah, never was. So they keep grabbing things and making things up. Oy. <laughs> I would like to see some of them on the kind of scrutiny they put Megan and, and, and Harry on. These people are just ridiculous. To all of you, thank you. A very, very big thank you to Sharon Agustin, Connie Bomber, Sharon May Smith, Lady G, Thank you so very much. Every single super sticker, super thanks makes a difference. I appreciate it so very much. And everything that you've donated goes right back into keeping the doors and the windows um, open for the channel. Today, I sat for a bit in contemplation. You know how one may <clears throat> have one of those extend, extend, I can't say the word now. <laughs> it's in my head. Um, what, one of those moments, basically, where you start to contemplate your existence and your life and, and not just about how you may see yourself, but also thinking about how people see you and trying to understand, well, who, who are you really? Are you pieces of how people see you? Or are you just, um, only you know who you are? And I was co contemplating that for a reason. You know, checking your notifications and every day, for example, and seeing that they are 10, 15 headlines almost daily on Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, articles that hopefully she'll never read, that she'll never see. And it really got me thinking about how many Meghan Markles exist in the universe, in people's minds, that was created and invented by an industrial
media press in the UK an industrial machinery whose only purpose it seems is to destroy there's a certain um, evil that comes from it and this is not just me being you know since since it's I, I can't I can't speak in any words beyond two syllables it seems like I, I can't get it out of my mouth but it, it is very very worrisome when I again I'm gonna keep repeating this stuff right almost a decade for eight years every single day every single minute in the day every single second Meghan Markle is being attacked verbally, is being attacked in the newspapers, is being attacked on, on, on YouTube um, shows, is being attacked on television, on print, newspapers, national, the stuff on the edge. And the question comes back over and over for people like us. But what did she do? And the other thing that comes back is if they are willing to treat her like this out in the open, then we don't stand a chance. The common folk. That's why I've said many a times that what's happening to Meghan Markle and to Prince Harry is bigger than them anyways um with that with that thought let me share share with you some of the um headlines um that that you know are here megan markle breaks silence with first statement as prince harry ends separation gb news i'll come back to it i just want to go down some of these headlines Meghan Markle's emotional connection to friend who joined her at Gala, People Magazine. Meghan Markle stuns fans as her first ever acting role surfaces, Yahoo Life UK. Meghan Markle back in touch with Suits co-star, Details, Hello Magazine. Meghan Markle American royalty intentions made clear as she stuns in red dress irish star camilla set secret code sorry camilla sent secret code to show megan's is one of us okay that is gotv queen elizabeth ii last word to describe megan markle this one really bothered me. <sighs> Queen Elizabeth II, last word to describe Meghan Markle was evil. The Royal Observer. Meghan Markle, former pal, gives unique insight into being ghosted by Duchess. Scottish Daily Express. Meghan Markle's new look could be insight into a major life change. The Daily Record. Meghan Markle gets upset. Re remarks. Sorry. Meghan Markle gets upset in remarks from friends about major issue. Pakistan today. So. Well, I'll, I'll stop it there. I. It's. It's. This would drive. Anyone. To insanity, any normal person that, I mean, I, I'm upset. And what it does, and I, I completely understand when I say, folks, when I say I completely understand that, that, that means like, I, I do understand either the issue or, or the situation or, or a feeling. 
I really understand when when so many of us are just like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it anymore, anymore about what these tabloids or these newspapers are saying or writing, because I'll talk for myself, and 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 I mean, you can identify with it the way you want to, but for me, it's personal. For me, it is personal. I came to this as many of you through through Megan. I mean, I know the royal family. I, I mean, I live in a Commonwealth country. I swore allegiance to the Queen. But it's the biracial woman from Suits that made me start to pay more attention. And to see what they have done and continue to do in 2024, October 2024, I, 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 I continue to have a hard time how the world has led this carry on like this and look squaddies the Sussex uh, Sussex squad I, I never met Tina and Michelle uh, you know I I, I I I was looking for community at the time <laughs> I didn't know you know where to go and find it until until I did but just imagine if you weren't here, we weren't here to sort of whether it's 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 whether it, whether our pushback is like one grain of salt, it's still a grain of salt that wasn't there before. And I don't know why it's been because I mean I, I know this stuff already, but for some reason this week. And last week, it really started to bother me. It's always bothered me, but I mean, really, really, this, this, this gut feeling, this, this continuous punch in the stomach. That close to eight years and every single day, this is just, and this stuff is mild to have a headline. Okay, to have a headline that says that some of the final words that Queen Elizabeth II said was that Meghan Markle is evil. That's that. That's what. That's what. That's what they have there. So I, I decided to. I'm like, okay, well, well let me follow. Who, who, who said this? And I do the click through, the click through, I click the click, and I get to this person who has this 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 website. I guess you know this person wants to be like a Perez Hilton or whatever those people, which is called the Royal Observer. And it will not surprise you that almost all the content on Meghan Markle on this person's page you know do I, do I do I even need to finish that sentence now he alleges right his name is um uh Charles Sch Schwarzer S W I T S E R no Z E R S W I T Z E R Schweizer. I'm, I'm not good at pronouncing those names and you know that stuff. But first name is Charles. So according to him, he says that in the weeks before Queen Elizabeth II died at Balmoral Castle on September 8, 2022, the revered, revered, revered monarch decided to get candid about her thoughts 
on Meghan Markle during a drink reception. So of all the other royals, all the other ones, Queen Elizabeth II, and we saw her condition that she was in when, when Trust went to meet the Queen, What was it days or, or, or weeks before she, her passing? She she had to get get out just about this, this one member of the family. She had to get it out. Continues. Often referred to as the most forgiven woman on earth, next to the late Mother Teresa. Okay, insiders describe. Do you, do, you, do you spot the cheat now? Do you spot the creative invention to continue dressing a little chihuahua dog up with lion skin or something? I mean, I'm not giving that example to refer to Megan. But 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 this this is what this this is. The minute he inserts there, okay. The minute he inserts, and he 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 says, you know, where is it now? I I, I lost it. Um, Often referred to as the most forgiven woman on earth, next to Mother Teresa, um, insiders. Here it is, insiders. Insiders describe how everybody's eyebrow hit the ceiling when the queen called the Duchess of Sussex evil. Does he understand the weight of that word? And if he does... If he does, why use it? Carry on. It was out of character for the queen to use such a word as evil to describe Megan. But she saw straight through her. Oh, here comes the mean girl thing now. Okay. One guest shared, so one guest, one guest at this drinking thing that the queen is hosting, the, the queen that is sick, that according to Boris Johnson has bone cancer, who is quite frail because we've seen her. In that condition, she saw it essential to call Meghan Markle evil. And one guess that was there, also done the, the, the gin or, or the vodka, whatever. Said that the queen saw straight through Meghan Markle's what acting? Wanting to be a good person? I continue. It was a sterling sentence to hear from the most forgiven woman on earth at the drinks before the dinner. A small group were talking to talking to the monarch, and she explained that Harry, meeting Meghan, had become a complete catastrophe, and described her as evil. And, and 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 this is when Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II decides to share all of this. So she's not sharing anything about her children. She's not sharing anything that she just paid out what twelve million pounds allegedly or something like that for her son. For her son, who said he never he's never met this woman. He's never S.A. this woman. I should say this girl. But 
will pay out 12 million pounds, allegedly. That's not what's worrying Her Majesty, who again is frail, sick, has bone cancer. What's worrying her is not the state of the country, her legacy. What's really worrying her is the choice that Harry made in marrying an evil woman. The source, the source, hey, you see, you see all, all of the, all of the essential words in order to, to be creative in your writing. The source then added, by this point, we all knew the queen's health was in decline and she had months left. She seemed regretful about how things had panned out. You know, so this sentence seems that the queen is in a very reflective mode. You know, if you know you're going to die pretty soon and you're having such a reflective, I would, I would hope she was surrounded by family and friends. So then my question is, who are the family and who are the friends? The sources, who, who, who are these people? Elizabeth II, penultimate Prime Minister Boris Johnson, went on to reveal the monarch had been battling bone cancer during the final years of, uh, the sentence breaks here and they don't continue, um, of, of her life. The queen was spared, huh, funny, spared from having to go through the up, uproarious scandal, December 2022, Netflix doc Harry and Meghan brought, brought to the crown, okay? The Duke of Sussex was not amused when his wife mocked Elizabeth II in the documentary, many quickly relabeled a trashy reality show with a big budget. Let me guess. Is he going to talk about the curtsy thing? I mean, come on, folks. And I'm not talking to people who who are analytical and, 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 and can hold two thoughts at the same time. I'm talking about the folks who've read this, and this has been said eight four four years ago, three years ago, every it's just a recycling of stories and you just pack some more things in it. I come back to what I said yesterday in the last last episode. Are you trying to review Boris Johnson's book, and because there isn't more juice meat to it, you need to surround the entire thing with Meghan Markle's stories. One of the most contentious moments among British viewers, at least, was when a smirking Megan, oh she is, yes, smirking Megan, performed a comic repeat of her first curtsy to the queen. And this is in quotes. So this is what Robert Hartman said it, wrote in his new book, Charles III, New King, New Court, New Inside Story. Mm. Sure, it sold a lot. The... The quasi, is that qu quasi look of discomfort on Harry's face was that of a man all too aware of the consequences yet 
unable to do anything about it. And there is the sentence, the piece de resistance that they always have to have. Harry, the little child, infantilized, the man that has no autonomy. Because this B-I-T-C-H of a woman controls him. So even when she's making a mockery, according to you folks, he just has to like look at her with a puppy face in disbelief. And I remember we were in the car and we were driving up and he's like, you know, how to curse right? And I just thought it was a joke. The ex-actress turned royal, now Strawberry Jam promoter, shared in the dock. Oh, my friend, Charles, why don't you just call her a hooker? Why don't you add more things to that? Come on. If you're going to go all out, just do it. Oh, the hate. I mean, you forgot to put she's, she's, she's a diversity. Maybe you should also write there how many boyfriends she had. Why don't you do that? Why don't you just say, you know, the ex-actress turned royal, twice married, dated 85 men, all executives of studios in Hollywood. Why don't you say that? Hmm? And then at the end of that sentence, just say allegedly or a source implied. I continue, it's surreal. It wasn't like some big moment of life. No, I'm going to get that. I should put my glasses on for heaven's sake. It's surreal. It wasn't like some big moment of like, now you're going to meet my grandmother. It didn't, I didn't know I was going to meet her until moments before she added. At that point, the former actress then performs a pantomime over exaggerated like rendition of a curtsy while laughingly sharing <sighs> Pleasure to meet you, Your Majesty. Let me let me let me ask you something, Charles. Hmm. Because that's where you end it. But that's 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 all. That's where that's where you end it. Um, somewhere here it says Daily Mirror reported on this insider revelation. Okay, so you, the information you've got, you've taken it from the Daily Mirror. Okay, all right. What else? What else do we have, Charles? That's it. All right. I've got a couple of questions for you, Charles. Do you understand or can you contextualize a situation when you are retelling a story? Because everything has context, right? You didn't get up, wake up in the morning and decided you're going to write this hateful piece about a woman who's been written about day in, day out, for the past eight years, a day have not been missed where a similar piece of venom has not been written about her. Now you may excuse yourself and say, well, this is what was reported in the Daily Mirror. Okay. 
You see, what I'm getting at here is something that I heard a very prominent contemporary writer said on a interview with on CBS and then on um, with, with Trevor Noah. He said it's fundamental. You, you are either for apartheid or you're against it. There's no, no, but, 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 no, 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 no. There's no but, 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 but. There's, you're either for apartheid or you're not. So by you making the choice to say, I'm going to write, I'm going to, I'm going to amplify this. Because what you think is true. You think and your analytical skills, I don't want to say they're very poor. I don't know you, and I wouldn't dare to say that to you. But based on what you have amplified, thus telling me that you agree with this, if you saw the Netflix docuseries and you see what Megan is explaining what they did prior and before, you can understand very clearly, very easily, what she's mimicking and what she's doing. Right? I have seen people who were brought up in that system, British, British people, who, when the Queen arrived, they didn't know whether to curtsy to the left, to the right, to backwards, frontwards, go on their knees. You see, it's interesting to me that so many of you are kind of have this mentality that you're more royal than the royals. You see, she is a royal. You are not. And none of the other people who want to have these commentaries and say, well, protocol was broken, are not royals. And Queen Elizabeth II herself said, oh, these, these protocol, this protocol, that. It doesn't take away that, that your inhumanity in understanding a person who has never been in that system who has never had to curtsy to anyone in her life. And the only reference that she has is are these big gestures of curtsy, which by the way, I've seen British English people do. How sad. And you know what is the saddest thing too? Is that this 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 piece of of, of venom was also regurgitated in other publications. The misogyny and the hate towards this woman, I will never, ever be able to comprehend. Because in order for me to comprehend it, I have to admit, which I have already, that inherently there's this evil within people who have decided that she is not deserving of respect. She's not deserving of citizenship that is of equal. She's not deserving of it. Therefore, we will treat her like a dog. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. I think dogs are treated even better. I don't know any dog unless they're in an abusive compound somewhere that for eight years keeps getting lynched, beaten over and over every single day, every day, every day. And the world stands by. 
I hate to make this comparison because I by no means am making a comparison between Meghan Markle and the Palestinian plight. I'm not. But there's a certain link that we can make when it comes to black and brown bodies where our suffering, what happens to us, doesn't meet the threshold of urgency. No, we can take, in, we can take the abuse for eight years. You can cut our, our water off and bomb us, and that's okay. Actually, the world will help you. What's happening to Meghan Markle is not just a message for Meghan Markle. I'll say that I said that from the from the beginning when I started this channel, and I'll say it on the last date that when that arrives that I sign off from this channel. What's happening to Meghan Markle is not just for Meghan Markle. 